This is video two of a two-part series. We're filming here in central Tamaki Makoto, Auckland, all about the incredible hotel dining options there are. We are just gonna have some crazy good food, the freshest, best seafood you can find in Aotearoa, amazing desserts, Peking duck. We're gonna get access into the kitchens, meet the chefs making all of this incredible food. This is gonna be an epic series. Enjoy this video. There is gonna be a ton of good food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. We are massive fans of the hotel restaurant scene here in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland, and we are so excited to share our favourite spots with you. This video is going to be jam packed full of incredible food Aotearoa's most amazing seafood, uh, Mediterranean inspired dishes. But we are kicking off with dessert. We are starting at Park Hyatt Auckland. We're taking you into the kitchen of executive pastry chef Callum Liddicote. He is a creative genius and I cannot wait to get into his food. We're going to be diving into afternoon tea here at Park Hyatt Auckland. But before we get eating, We've been given special access into the test kitchen of Callum Liddicote. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here today. So uh, Callum is the executive pastry chef here at Park Hyatt. Let's, let's rewind. Yep, let's talk totally. A little, let's talk let's a little go. bit about what you do here. So I basically do everything that's got to do with sweet things in the hotel. So obviously we've, we've got about four or five outlets plus functions. So um, I'm getting the afternoon tea ready, which is situated in the living room. Yeah, so then we've got Onimata, which is our restaurant um, open. We, we do breakfast in there for the, for the hotel guests and then it's dinner, uh, Tuesday to Saturday. So that's where I really explore um, a little bit more of my creativity aspect of my background of being Michelin star and all that kind of stuff. So, so people can come here and experience your creations across all the dining venues, absolutely. essentially. Yep. So, so we're having afternoon tea today. Um, like a high tea, essentially. Yep, for sure. I don't call it high tea, I call it afternoon tea here just because you'll see later on the way it's served. Okay. Um, and I just kind of feel afternoon tea so much more relaxed. And Got it. the hotel here is, you know, it, it's formed like it's someone's home. You eat in the living room. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's more of that relaxed but refined um, afternoon tea rather than high tea. Love it. <laughs> I fell into a creative industry of, of that of being a pastry chef. Yeah. Never was a chef, um, straight into pastry. So it's been 22 years of just playing with sugar, chocolate, flour, anything that I can get my hands on really. You know, but even vegetables, even herbs. Um, I love to explore um, every bit of food that I can use um, in the pastry kitchen, so yeah. <laughs> So this is pretty special, sitting in the living room with the creator of these amazing pastries. And I just want to, I just want to dive in. But before we do, do it, that, do before it. we do that, <laughs> so what have we got? So here we have our essentially our autumn afternoon tea. I guess talk us through how we work through this. What have we got in front of us? Yeah, for sure. So what you see here. Um, isn't it, it's not how it comes. Okay. So here at Park Hyatt, we really um, wanted to change up the way afternoon tea is served. So here you'll see it's in four parts and that's pretty much how it's served. And it's a nostalgic journey, like old meets new kind of thing. So it, pretty much you start with an amuse bush mm -hmm. or a little snack. Um, here for now we have a chicken mayo, celery and red onion tartlet. So what would then come is you would start with savoury, which here for the wow. savoury afternoon tea, you've kind of got a roast pumpkin hazelnut shoe. Mm -hmm. 
The next one is a salmon and nori uh, terrine. Then you've actually got a beef tartare mm. rolled in in uh, chips, potato chips again. And then you've got a tarragon, cream fraiche and Granny Smith apple roulard. So we've gone away from that ugly silver three tier. The, the view um, is amazing here. So we don't want to take that away. Mm -hmm. And we believe, and I believe that our food is best presented in this way. Mm -hmm. So we've got the stunning pieces Stunning morsels that Callum was making in the test kitchen. The so, best course. Yeah, the best course, obviously. So we've got the So this is the, the carrot. carrot. So inside you've got roasted carrot puree, mm. and then I've taken Aurelie's chocolate from Valrona, and then it's dipped in that carrot glaze and it sits on a buckwheat sablé, mm -hmm. candy ball nuts. This one here is the- Chips and chocolate. Chips and chocolate, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, caramel, caramelized mandarin jelly, milk chocolate mousse, potato chips. Mm -hmm. This one here is actually parsnip and apple. Ooh. Uh, parsnip apple with a honey mousse, uh, fresh Granny Smith apple. Mm -hmm. And then we've, fi we've finished with the lemon pill, which is the uh, uzu and bergamot uh, curd mm -hmm. with the lemon poppy seed uh, mousse. Mm -hmm. And then finally? And then finally, so like all afternoon teas, you do have to finish a little bit traditional, yes. but I don't go all the way. So we only serve one scone. So we've got the, the, the vanilla bean scone here, and then we serve it with a, uh, at the moment, it's a fruit brioche. So then, then there's the lemon and pear roulade. Oh, I can't wait to eat. eat. Thank you. No, Gorgeous. absolute pleasure. Thank you. Tea's been poured. I'm going down the unconventional route, going straight to sweets, because this is what we've watched being made, and I'm going straight to the chips and chocolate. Mmm. Look at those layers. Sponge, cream, chocolate. Not overly sweet, it doesn't smack you around the face. It's delicate, it's light, but it does provide that mega chocolatey hit. And then you've got that saltiness from the chip. This is perfection. I've got to taste this carrot, ooh. It's a beautiful texture. It's really plump and soft. I just want to poke it. Mmm. Look at that. Wow. It's savory from the carrot in there. You've got that gel around um, the top of it. It's soft. You've got a crunchy biscuit on the bottom. Whoa. That is next level. I'm just in absolute awe. There's so much love and care has gone into this food. You've got to get to Park Hyatt. Come and experience Callum's creations. It will blow your mind. The epic eating is going to continue now. We're going to Esther in the QT Hotel. This is an amazing restaurant and a really cool hotel. We've not stayed at this particular one, but I think that's a good segue into the fact that you don't need to be staying at these hotels to eat in the restaurants. I think that's a bit of a blockage some people have. I myself find it sometimes where you think, oh, am I meant to be in here? Totally, you're meant to be in these restaurants. So if you're staying at the hotel or not, you can totally dine at these places. And this is an absolute winner. Let's go check out this epic kitchen and have a feast. Esther is a restaurant by Chef Sean Connolly and the menu is inspired by the Mediterranean. And like check out this space, it is absolutely gorgeous and you've got this incredible open kitchen. Let's head in and meet the chefs. We're going to be hanging out with executive chef James Laird today and I see some oysters being yeah. prepped. So we'll, um, we'll shuck you some Timatuku oysters from Waiheke Island. They're amazing, they're my absolute favourite in New Zealand. They'll be good. <laughs> Tell us about Esther and the food here. Uh, so it's a Sean Connolly restaurant. So I've been working with Sean for quite a few years now. An amazing concept. Um, simple food, done well. Um, fresh, we're down by the seaside. Um, so with a focus on you know, seafood, we've also got our open fire pits for cooking steaks, cooking grills, and pastas, Mediterranean focused. 
and the food is sensational. We love eating here. It's great. James is putting together an epic menu for our dinner tonight and I have requested that we have the puff bread. This is one of my favourite items on the menu. It's a tricky business, this puff bread, eh? Yeah, it's not always uh, perfect science with these. Um, they sometimes work, sometimes don't. But I think I've got my te technique down mm -hmm. and we should be able to get a good one up to you. And it's going to go into this beautiful oven behind me. And hopefully this puffs up. Yeah, well, my fingers are crossed. It's well, working! Uh, I Good know, old. it's like magic! That's exciting, look at it! Woohoohoo! Oh, James, you're a master. It's come out good. Look at that, so to rise at the table, like this beautiful puffy cloud, and then it's perfect for dipping into the taramasalata. So it's like a souffle, all that uh, steam inside, puffing it up. Can't wait to get into it. James was just saying that we have to eat the saganaki. In fact, I've eaten this dish before and it is sensational. So essentially, baked cheese. Look at it bubbling away. Is that honey on the top? Yeah, so honey, chili and oregano. And uh, we're using a Greek Keflo Graviera cheese. It's absolutely amazing. It is uh, one of our signatures here. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. <laughs> this is so impressive. James is holding a serious piece of meat, just popped on the grill. So we've got one of our 500 gram ribeyes, um, grass fed New Zealand beef, absolutely amazing. So this gets cooked in our Montague out the back and finished up the front here. table is loaded with all of that delicious food that James is cooking and just look at the kitchen behind me you feel like such a part of the food that's being created as a diner because it's all right there happening in front of you so we've got oysters we've got saganaki the puff bread tara masalata that greek fish roe dip a trevally crudo and then this sensational piece of grass-fed ribeye and it's just all beautiful to look at, all stunning. I've got to rip into this puff bread. Loaded up that puff bread with the tara masalata. Mmm. The bread is so light and fluffy, and then that tara masalata, creamy. You can really taste that fish roe in there, and then you've got the pop and tartness of that finger lime. Oh, steak tartare ta -ta, and yeah. fritz. Enjoy. Thank you. My pleasure. So the steak tartare has just arrived. Just beautiful, fresh food. Sensational. Saganaki dripping with honey. Mm. Fried cheese. It's perfection, but that is delicious. Sweet from the honey, a little tartness of the cheese, and it's perfect with that bread. I know Sheena has talked about it, but how good is this environment? You feel so immersed in what you're eating here. It's happening all around you, the cooking. I'm diving into the steak tartare, so the raw beef mixed up with a ton of ingredients. Mm. That is a great tartare. Super well balanced. Oh man. It's delicious. I'm just, I love it. I love this restaurant. The food is so good. Let's grab some True Valley Crudo. Look at that. Pomegranate seeds on top. Another gorgeous dish. Mm. Wow. That screams so much about what they're doing here. It looks gorgeous. That herb oil, pomegranate seeds, herbs on top, but it tastes gorgeous too far out. That has got such good mouth feel and the flavour. Oh, wow, this is so good. Alright guys, I know you're pretty much done but I have a little treat here for you <laughs> and that is our a salt little, bake snapper. A little treat. So we have encrusted this fish in salt, yeah. roasted it in the oven and now we'll uh, crack it open 
and show you how amazing it is. So this is one of the dishes we offer at Esther. We do this table side. Wow, look at that. Stunning tamaday stuffed with lemon, I can see herbs. Yes, a few fresh herbs and lemon in there. Thank you, thank You're you, welcome. thank you. It looks incredible. I can't wait to dive into that. Yep. And all the rest of this. Good luck, good luck. <laughs> We're gonna need it. Wow, oh, this snapper, it's tender as anything. Mm. Melts in your mouth. I love this place. I love the food, I love the people, I love the atmosphere. Everything about this is the perfect dining experience. You have to get to Esther. How's this for an outlook for our next meal? We're right on the Waitemata. We're going to Hilton Auckland and we're gonna be eating at Fish, which is right up there on that balcony. These guys are doing incredible things with uh, sustainably caught, just, you know, the best seafood, kaimawana, you'll find here in Aotearoa. They're cooking up here. Let's get into this. I'm really excited about this one. Wow, look at this view. It is drop dead gorgeous. What a view to dine by. So we're lucky enough to be filming in between lunch service and dinner service, which is why there's an empty restaurant behind me. We're going to be eating the Taste of Fish four course menu, which changes seasonally with what the team can access in terms of seafood. And we wanted to be able to take you into the kitchen for each course to show you how the chefs make each dish. So let's head in and meet the chefs. We've entered the inner sanctum at Fish. We're in the kitchen where all the magic happens. We're going to be hanging out with the culinary director, Des Harris. Sheena, and hello. Hello. Hey. Nice to be here. And executive chef, Josh Seeds. So these guys are going to be cooking up our feast today. So before we run through the menu, let's talk a bit about what Fish is about. Fish is just about a celebration of New Zealand seafood. Okay, we cook with a lot of seasonality, uh, a lot of freshness. Um, we have a motto that goes something like, you know, today's fish was in the sea yesterday. I love okay, that. so it's all about fresh seafood prepared very simply. But, you know, I like to give a little twists and, and really apply my culinary identity to the, to the profile of the, of the food. Uh, so I like lots of acid, goes really well with seafood, right? And I really like, I do lean towards Japan with my flavor profiles, so lots of umami. I think that's really, really important. You know, we're taught to cook with sweet, sour, salty, savory, but umami is just that extra layer of yum. Mm -hmm. um, so today we're gonna show you some, some very simple dishes. Well, I, I like to think simple. Simple. But simple. I guess like that's the trick, like, you know, 30 odd years of cooking translate to what's on the plate so so excited so what are we eating it's four courses well I come from Wellington and I cooked at a place called Logan Brown so uh, one of the dishes is a little homage to Al so we've got a pawa fritter so pawa is abalone abalone comes from the Tora collective Tora okay collective, so the out of the wire wrapper delicious blackfoot pawa is indigenous to our country it's around the, the shoreline and fingers crossed it's something that we can continue to serve. It's a you know? special ingredient. Oh, it's so yummy. So we've got power. We've, we've got, got some diamond shell clams. Okay, uh, my little twist on this is pickled garlic butter. Yeah. And we're just gonna cook them with a blowtorch. Uh, we've got some crayfish. Crayfish, okay. so rock lobster, yeah, cholera, so where's that, that from? That's from Chatham Islands. Now we are going to sous vide that. Uh, we're gonna finish it on the plancha. Okay. So to add a little bit of flavor. And we're also going to rock a piece of Mount Cook Alpine salmon. Yeah. We've been very lucky. We've timed this so well with our Mount Cook Alpine uh, caviar. Okay, okay, which is an ultra seasonal ingredient, which is only around for about a month. So we're lucky enough to be able to serve that with a little butter emulsion as well, different to the beurre blanc. Uh, it's a little bit softer with miso and stock. So that's what we have going. Oh, let's get into it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm just peering over Josh's 
shoulder as he applies a bit of flame to our clams. So diamond shell clams, they've been freshly shucked and there's a load of pickled garlic butter over the top. Clams from Cloudy Bay, a really generous clam, huge actually, and then it's just swimming in a pool of butter with that pickled garlic. Mmm. Beautiful. Freshly shucked. They taste like the sea, so a lovely brininess, tender. The pickled garlic and the butter are just this luxurious sort of silkiness on the palate. Yum, yum, yum. And a little glass of bubbles to wash it down. Second course is on the go, so we've got a power fritter, a classic kiwi dish, but I suspect that Josh is going to make this like a souped up version. So we've, right? We can only hope. <laughs> so we've just added some, some garlic, some chilli, a little bit of batter, lemon zest, coriander, all those flavours that just marry so well with the power. Just u uber delicious. You're celebrating the raw ingredient. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Josh is just plating up the power fritter. So it's sitting in this puddle of whey beurblanc. Beurblanc is a white wine butter sauce. And then what are you popping over the top? Just some coriander, chili, fennel and champagne dressing. Oh, wow. So that's gonna cut through the richness of the dish. Now, power is very sought after. It's highly prized. It's a it's a stunning item and it's not something you have every day so this is a very special thing to have and also while we're sitting here right on the water i mean far out wow wow burst of the ocean flavor a burst of um of freshness as well because covering coriander fennel and then you've got that bourbon sauce so you've got this creaminess coming in from that Wow, that really champions the power. And it's, a, it's an ingredient that should be championed. And it's so in line with what they're doing here at Fish. They're taking the best quality ingredients and doing simple but delicious things with them. And this screams that. Wow, that, that's really good. So we've got some uh, Malkok Alpine salmon. I love the salmon because obviously Hence the name Cool Climate comes from Mount Cook, so it comes from the waterways. Beautiful. Uh, but I find with like a little bit of brining and warming up in the oven, it's like a little bit more toothsome, there's a little bit more texture. Oh, okay. The salmon can be a little bit mushy. Yeah. So I make this brine, this aromatic brine, gets like half an hour in a 3% brine. And then what that does is it replaces the moisture from within the salmon with salt. Okay. So it just improves the texture. All right. So brining is on trend. Loads of loads of kids do it, <laughs> and it, it does you, you know it does enable you to manipulate the, the the flesh and the texture. So simply to order, I warm it up in the oven. Whoa! Good stuff. So salmon row, beautiful. So this is the this brine. This is brine and salted, and this one's marinated in uh, sake and mirror. Wow. So the most amazing thing about this product is hyper seasonal. So in the tin with the lid locked, seven day shelf life. Okay, so it's only available for a month. Look at this plate. It almost looks too good to eat, almost. But you've got that beautiful um, fillet of salmon, the ikura, which is the salmon roe, it's sitting in that puddle of miso butter. There's lemon curd, there's furikake, which is a Japanese condiment with sesame seeds, seaweed. Holy moly. It is so delicate. The salmon melts in your mouth. You can tell just by looking at it that it will melt in your mouth. It's stunning. And then you've got the pop of the salmon roe. You've got that beautiful miso butter, which is really rich. This is sensational. because this is the final course.
but it is a good one. This is the piece de resistance. This is the colder crayfish or rock lobster. And how has it been cooked? Well, we have sous vide it. Okay. So in a little bit of uh, white soy and brown butter. So we've brought the core up to roughly about 45 degrees. So when we give it a good sear, it'll bring the core up to like 50. So it'll wow. be like tender. So we keep all our scampi, sh uh, scampi shells mm. and we'll like dry them out and pulverize them and make it like a very heady kind of salt. It's like that extra layer of shellfishness. Too right. It's, gonna make, <laughs> it's all about deliciousness, right? It is. So essentially the dish is uh, Chatham Islands lobster, sunflower risotto, sweet corn and macadamia. The final touches are being put on the crayfish dish. It looks absolutely delectable. It is so awesome for us to be able to take you guys behind the scenes into these kitchens to hang out with these amazing chefs, creating this inspiring, delicious food. My mouth is watering. It not should be. It's that. like really good. <laughs> it's not off, not often that I like I talk something up, but this dish is actually like very good. What a spectacular dish! So this crayfish or colder is is highly sought after. Again, this is a special thing to be eating. And but this environment, I know we've talked about it a lot, but it is such a special place to be eating. So the sun is just starting to sort of tick towards the horizon. You've got the, the afternoon ferries cruising by. It's truly spectacular. But what I really like about it is it's not a restaurant you come to because the view's good and the food's a bit meh. The food is insane. It's incredibly good food using high, high grade um, kaimoana seafood. And then the views are like an added bonus. Whoa. Mmm. Oh, the flavors. That crayfish is perfect because it's been sous vide. It's just perfectly cooked. It is the most tender thing you could imagine. And then you've got sourness from the lemon that's on there. It's, it's got a little bit of bitter and sour kick. Mmm. The sweet corn and the sunflower shine as well. All perfectly balanced. This has been a spectacular meal. Every course, so four courses of spectacular food, cooked perfectly, simple, simple cooking done impeccably. Wow, what a way to end this video. I mean, we've had so much good food through this video. And this is the second video in a two part series about the best hotel dining here in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland. And what a way to wrap it up. Incredible seafood right on the Waitamata. I mean, far out. This is good, so good. Loved everything we've eaten. Thank you for watching. Watch the first video if you've not seen it yet. Thank you very much.